Amy Weaver, the creator of the Migraine Relief Plan. And I'm excited to be here today to share 10 everyday things that make migraines worse and what to do instead. So thanks so much for being here. I'm really glad that you are. And I look forward to hearing your feedback after the webinar. So I'd encourage you to take this time to just turn everything off. Turn off your email, turn off your phone, close your other windows. Um, don't multitask during this. Just really take this time to focus a little bit. If you received the workshop in advance or the worksheet in advance, then pull that out so you can take notes as we go along. And just take this time to be present, to take a nice deep breath and invest this time in yourself so that you can learn a little bit more that maybe will help you reduce your migraine attacks and their frequency as well as their intensity because that's what we want. And I want to congratulate you for attending because you're taking the first step to getting better control of your migraines. If you stay to the end, there will be a couple of really nice special gifts for you. So I encourage you to do that and uh, don't miss out on that. And I just want you to think about on a scale of one to 10, how passionate are you about making your migraines better? Now that might seem like a silly question, uh, but I have to say that uh, when I was diagnosed, I was an 11. I had had some really rough times with migraine, my migraine experience, and which included vertigo and nausea. And this one day was kind of a low that I think about. I had gone to the, my husband had driven me to the chiropractor because uh, I was too dizzy to drive myself. I got sick at his office, so I threw up in front of him in his wastebasket, which really was embarrassing. And then when we were coming home, our street was torn up, so we weren't able to park in front of our house. And so we parked around the corner, and we walked by the construction crew, and I said to my husband, I'm not going to make it home. This is not my home. This is a neighbor's house. And he said, oh, you, yes, you will. And I said, no, I'm not. And so on my hands and knees, I threw up in the neighbor's lawn in front of all the construction workers and I didn't even make it to the toilet. So that was a bad day. And I was really hoping to not have days like that and to find something else that might work better for me. So let me tell you a little bit about who I am, just to give you some context. Uh, and sometimes I'm a patient, just like you. I spend time in doctor's offices and there's always bad lighting in there. And I also happen to have a master's of public health degree in nutrition education. I write a food blog called Recipe Renovator, and I've been doing that for about five and a half years. I'm also a technical writer, which means that I've done a lot of research and taken information and put it into formats that are easier for people to understand. So that's been about 25, 30 years that I've been doing that. And if I were a dog, even though I love my golden retriever, I would be a terrier because I am relentless when it comes to figuring out solutions. And if I were a movie character, I would be Daniel Day-Lewis in The Last of Mohicans because I was determined to find not the girl, but the answer to this problem. I also did a ton of research. So this is just some of the books that I read to develop uh, the, the plan and the book that's coming out next year. I spent time in the medical research library at University of California, San Diego, uh, which not a lot of people do. And I waded through more than 100 articles about migraine and diet and brain health and all kinds of solutions that might be helpful. And I have to say that I was really surprised and kind of shocked about what I learned uh, about migraine, uh, in part because there's just not a ton of research that's been done, and most of it or all of it is related to um, pharmaceutical interventions as opposed to non-drug interventions. But here's some of the things that really shocked and surprised me. I had, at the time, an incredibly healthy diet. My health diet is still very healthy. It's very different right now. But it turned out that many of the super healthy foods that I was eating on a regular basis were, unbeknownst to me, migraine triggers. 
uh, this is not my refrigerator, but it's a refrigerator. And when I was sent home from the doctor's office uh, with the migraine diet sheet, I opened the door to my refrigerator and discovered that about 75% of what was in my refrigerator was potentially a migraine trigger for me and was probably going to have to go, which was shocking and distressing. I also had some other habits that I didn't realize might be contributing to my migraine. I had an irregular sleep pattern. Some nights I'd stay up really late, other nights I'd go to bed early, I'd get up at various times in the morning, and that variation is not helpful for migraine. I also had no idea that the extreme light sensitivity that I sometimes suffered from was actually a migraine symptom. No idea about that. It's called photophobia. Now, this poor girl really needs to eat something much more substantial than a salad because she's very thin. But um, the point is that I often would not necessarily <laughs> turn down a salad, but I would skip meals or I'd eat on an irregular basis. Some days I'd eat real regularly. Some days I'd be all over the map. And that in and of itself is not super helpful for migraine. I also had taken to, um, on the behalf of lots of health people, eating lots of uh, fermented foods, uh, which are super healthy because they're probiotic, but they're also can be migraine triggers, which I did not know. And while I was not really a weightlifting person, I also had an irregular exercise pattern. So I'd go for a while without exercises and then I'd try to get back into it and I'd maybe exercise way too much and I'd throw myself out of whack. And that irregularity was also an issue. And I also tended to forget to drink water. And I'm gonna take a sip right now just to remind myself. And an empty water glass is, uh, well, may, may, maybe you finished it, but in my case, it often meant that I forgot and I was possibly getting dehydrated. Now I did have a couple things that maybe other people didn't have. One is that I had been gluten-free for 10 years. And so I was already familiar with being gluten-free and the potential anti-inflammatory benefits of that. I also had been sugar-free or nearly sugar-free. Certainly most refined sugar products have been out of my life for close to 10 years. I love to cook. I also was really good at renovating recipes, that's what my blog is called, to um, fix or fit part particular dietary re restrictions. So, um, you know, whether it was plant-based or being gluten-free or sugar-free or um, soy-free or different and uh, low sodium, I was very comfortable with all of those options and had come up with really wonderful creative recipes for that. And it turns out when I looked back over my life history, I had been asked or required or chosen for health reasons to, to change my diet a number of times, in fact, seven times. <laughs> so I had a lot of experience with changing my diet. I also had a starting point. My doctor gave me this sheet, uh, it was a three page handout from the National Headache Foundation that told me foods to, eat and foods to avoid. So I did have a starting point. And unlike nor kind of normal people, because I was a blogger, I could contact other bloggers and other people with websites and ask them questions. So I had a lot of resources. Um, Donald Gazaniga from megaheart.com was super helpful, as was Jess from Sodium Girl. So I had a starting point for looking at this new way of eating, new to me way of eating. And I was also really determined because I didn't want to throw up in front of construction workers anymore. So you might say I was Daniel Day-Lewis and a terrier combined. At this point, you might be wondering, okay, great, I've learned about Stephanie. Maybe don't care that much, or maybe that was interesting, but I want to know how is this going to help me and my migraine? Well, here we go. Here's your 10 everyday things that might be making your migraines worse and my tips for what to do instead. So let's kind of look at some of those things that I mentioned. One of the things that uh, migraine experts do agree on is that having a regular schedule with sleep, with exercise, with eating are all incredibly important because the more regular you are, the less your brain is likely to trigger into 
to migraine. So going to bed at the same time every night, even on the weekends, and that may be late, uh, but having that regular bedtime and then working towards, uh, you know, a good amount of sleep is helpful. And the same as getting up at the same time every day. One thing I didn't realize was that using a screen, whether that's a TV, a computer, a tablet, a phone, they emit blue light and that affects our, or depresses our melatonin release, which is the natural sleep hormone that we have. So if you can turn all of those off an hour before bed and maybe read an actual book or a magazine or just relax or do some meditation or something, that will help with your sleep clock. And another thing I didn't realize is that the um, min mineral magnesium is a great supplement to take for migraine because not only does it help seem to help reduce migraine frequency, but it also helps with sleep. So taking it about an hour before bed can be really helpful with sleep patterns. Now let's talk about processed food. I wasn't eating a ton of processed food, but most people do because that's just normal in our, in our life, in our culture. So why do you, why should you consider reducing those in your life? Well, here's a couple of reasons. Pretty much all processed food is going to include soy in some form. It might be, it might not say soy, but it's very likely if you, if the food has a long list of ingredients that soy is in there somewhere. And soy in and of itself is a migraine trigger. Now, the other issue with soy is that about 90% of it is a, genetically modified organism soy, GML soy. And the reason for that is that they've created this genetically modified soy is so that they can spray Roundup on it and it doesn't die. So they spray the field, it kills all the other weeds. It doesn't kill the soybean plant because it's been genetically modified to resist glyphosate, which is the active ingredient in Roundup. And voila, you have a very easy to harvest soy plant the problem is that uh, that's got herbicide on it. Uh, glyphosate is an herbicide, and they, you know, there's a lot of studies about glyphosate and Roundup, and I don't, we don't need to go into whether or not it causes cancer and stuff. The issue, though, that they do now because it's an herbicide is that it actually kills the good bacteria inside your body, inside your gut, so it can really disrupt your natural digestion, and that is really important. So also processed food can have lots of other triggers in it. And so the cleaner and fewer ingredients and the more whole foods that you're eating, the better for you. Processed food also frequently contains some kind of artificial sweetener because our diets here in the US have been sort of engineered to be sweet and salty and fatty. And if they're reducing the actual sugar in the food, then they might be switching that out with aspartame. And aspartame is a problem specifically because it's made up of two uh, neuro excitotoxins, meaning they're neurotransmit, they're chemicals that excite your brain. And we really don't want to have our brains any more excited than they already are. So that's why things like Diet Coke or um, NutraSweet sweetened yogurt are not good choices um, because of the aspartame. It also, um, when it's taken into the body, it breaks down into a third component, which is formaldehyde, which is the chemical that they use to preserve dead bodies. So that may not have anything to do with migraine, but it's just not something I want to be ingesting in my body. And the triad of sweet, salty, and fat foods are designed by very smart food chemists to be addictive. So that is a problem because uh, it's not your imagination that if you open a bag of Cool Ranch Doritos, you feel compelled to eat the entire bag. It's not that you don't have willpower, it's that that food was actually designed to make you want and need to finish it. So it's not your fault, you just need to not choose those foods as often. So the solution to this is just to work towards eating whole foods, things that are in the outer perimeter of the grocery store uh, that your grandmother would have recognized. Those are some really good ways to know what a whole food is. Now we talked about water and I'm gonna take another sip. Well, let's talk a little bit about de dehydration. 
most migraine experts agree that um, being dehydrated can is a very well-known trigger for migraine. And so the easy solution is to drink more water throughout the day. Um, but you can also, you know, mix it up. You can find herbal teas that don't have triggers in them. I like, I love to do infused water with maybe cucumber and an herb or strawberries and something else. And if you can tolerate decaffeinated green tea, so organic decaffeinated green tea, um, if it doesn't, that, that still has some caffeine in it. And if it's, if you're not sensitive to that, it's really high in antioxidants, which is also good for our brains. So, so that's a, an all another alternative. I still want to feed this girl something much more substantial than a salad, but let's talk about irregular meals. It's really easy to get busy and to skip eating or to have lunch an hour and a half late because you're waiting for other people. And the problem with that is that that means that our blood sugar levels are going up and down throughout the day, more like a roller coaster than a nice even uh, line. And you really don't want that roller coaster because when your blood sugar drops out, that is definitely a known migraine trigger. So I also don't recommend people who get migraine that they do any kind of um, fasting, juice fasting, you know, kind of intense cleanses because you do get that very um, low blood sugar can happen with those. And so I really don't recommend them for people who get migraine. I, what I do recommend is eating either three good sized meals and a couple of snacks or six small meals throughout the day, depending on your life and what feels comfortable to you. But really be looking at having some fat and some protein in all of those meals and snacks. And um, so that way it'll keep your blood sugar going uh, pretty nice and even throughout the day. Now, I talked a little bit about fermented foods and aged foods. Well, the reason that those are an issue is because they contain uh, something called tyramine, which I had never heard of, and I've been in the nutrition arena for a long time. Well, it's, it's a, a compound that breaks down from an amino acid called tyrosine, which is an important food component in our bodies. But when we have too much of it, it has been seen to be a migraine trigger. And the issue is that aged foods and fermented foods are really high in tyramine. That's something that happens. They're also high in glutamates as well. So older foods, so stuff that's been in the refrigerator for two weeks, aged cheese that's three to six to nine months old, uh, sauerkraut, all of those things are higher in tyramine and they can be very powerful triggers for you. So the solution to this is to choose fresh foods. I take a probiotic, uh, skip cheese, wine, and processed meats. So I don't eat really any of those foods. And I always got a headache from wine almost instantly. So I've really never been much of a drinker for that reason. I didn't realize it was a, a migraine thing. I just always got a headache from it. But also these really healthy foods that I had a whole refrigerator full of, kombucha and miso and kefir and sauerkraut, those are all delicious, very healthy foods, but they're probably not good for you and your migraine. So what I like to encourage people to do is to take a probiotic supplement and get those good, good bacteria going that way. And then you can test these foods for yourself individually. I personally have found that I can't tolerate any of them and I was eating them all the time. Now, I'm not going to call it exercise because that's kind of a loaded word in our culture. So let's think of it as movement. And it is difficult in our culture to not be sedentary. You know, we tend to work at computers. We sit around and watch TV. We drive in a car. We're not walking. We're not moving very much. And that is a problem because it's not good for our bodies, but there's also some issues with, uh, with migraine. So what I encourage people to do in my program is to work towards regular and gentle movement. So regular walking gradually built up over time is great. If you want to do, you know, if you're in condition and you want to do more than that, that's fine, but be very sensitive to what your body can tolerate as you're building up towards more aerobic exercise and strength training exercises. Now, one of the really cool studies that I found was that when people who got migraine, uh, they were randomized into two groups. So one did a general kind of general exercise program and one was put on a 
preventive called topiramate, which is also known as Topamax. And they found that the results were pretty much equal, that the exercise group had just as good of a response in terms of fewer migraine as the people who are on the medication. And that medication has a ton of side effects and exercise side effects are pretty much all good. So that was really encouraging. Now, I mentioned a little bit about sugar earlier when I was talking about processed foods. Let me tell you why sugar is a problem. As I mentioned, it's in almost all processed foods in some form or other, and there's over 50 names for sugar. So it's something that you're going to find in almost every kind of processed food, even if it's a savory food. And the problem with sugar is that it supports inflammation in your body. So a tiny little bit of sugar once in a while is not a big deal. But when you're eating, you know, several items at every single meal and they all have sugar in them and you're eating that type of food three to five times a day, you're going to have a lot of inflammation in your body. And an inflamed body means you have an inflamed brain and an inflamed brain is more likely to trigger into a migraine. So what I encourage people to do is to gradually step down off of sugary foods. If you have to have some sweetener to use organic stevia, I found one brand that I really like that doesn't have an aftertaste as long as you don't use too much of it. And if you can buy the, you know, buy a plant and grow it and use the leaves, that's even better because any white powder has been processed to some degree. But, um, but that's what I really recommend for people is to, you know, have fruit, um, lower glycemic fruit is great, a little bit of stevia, but to really try to step down off of those sugary foods. Now, this was one, an area that I really didn't know was con contributing to my migraine at all. And so it was a kind of a big surprise for me. But once I started doing the research and the reading, I started recognizing that, oh, yeah, I have had problems with this in the past. These are called environmental triggers. And they, to some degree, you can control them. It depends. You know, your workplace lighting, you may not have any control over. The biggest issue for me is um, those fluorescent light bulbs that have that buzz to them. And those can trigger a migraine in and of themselves. And almost every single doctor's office has those in there in the exam rooms. So it's a problem to even just go see your migraine doctor. I've also had issues in the past when there was a fan, a ceiling fan on that had a light and that the light was being impacted by the fan blades and giving that kind of strobe effect, that has triggered a migraine for me. I've also had that same thing happen driving on a really bright day going under overpasses and getting that strobe effect. Strong smells like bleach, fish, gasoline, can perfume can all trigger migraine and those are well documented. So how you deal with this is change what you can at home, ask for accommodations at work, um, see what you can change in your life. And then if you have to work in a particular environment that has horrible lighting and you're really aware that you know it can't be changed and it is a definite trigger for you, there's actually migraine glasses called Theraspects that were developed by a migraine sufferer for that very situation. So you don't have to continue to suffer. You can really work towards some solutions here for yourself. Now, caffeine is kind of an interesting one because a lot of people use caffeine to treat their own migraines. And that's because in the short term, it really does help. It dilates blood vessels, which can have been in might be inflamed and might be constricted, and therefore you, you do feel relief. And so people will say, oh, all I just have to do is drink a Coke and my migraine will go away, or I just have, I just do an espresso shot, shot. I've always been super sensitive to caffeine, so that was never an option for me, but it is very common. The problem with using caffeine like that is that you're going to be getting more headaches, more migraine because of rebound. And only you can decide if that's a problem for you. You know, maybe you say, you know what, it really isn't that often that this happens. And so I will, you know, just continue enjoying my coffee. Um, I do have decaf coffee from time to time because I really love the flavor and have, you know, a nice latte or something. Um, 
so it's just something you have to decide for yourself, but you definitely don't want to be using any caffeine containing either over the counter or prescription medications because those have definitely been implicated in rebound headaches. So be aware that of course, coffee, tea, diet Coke, chocolate, all have caffeine in them and really think about whether or not you want to continue to use those in your life. And some substitutes, um, which, you know, you may say none of those are substitutes and that's fine. I totally get it. They're not really, they're alternatives. Uh, like I said earlier, decaffeinated green tea or decaffeinated coffee occasionally. I like water and infused waters. Carob is not the same as chocolate and I don't pretend that it is, but if you're looking for sort of chocolatey, tasty treats, uh, carob can be a reasonable alternative for those. And our last one is sodium. So you might think, what does sodium have to do with migraine? Well, I also had no idea that there was any connection whatsoever. But one thing that's been documented is that someone eating just simply a high salt meal, even if it doesn't include any other triggers, has been seen to trigger a migraine. Also, um, there's a lot of connection between dizziness, vertigo, and Meniere's disease and migraine, and sodium seems to be a factor in that. There's been some recent studies that have shown that white salt, the bleached salt that's found in processed food, seems to be an indicator in autoimmune illnesses. And some of the migraine experts that I've talked to uh, believe that migraine has an autoimmune component. So you don't really want to have anything else that's contributing to that in your life. So if you can find iodized sea salt, I would use that at the table. Um, if you can't find iodized sea salt, then just make sure that your multivitamin includes iodine, which most multivitamins do. And then you don't need to worry about having any kind of an iodine deficiency. And again, we're back to cooking more of your own whole foods, right? This is the solution for a lot of illnesses. It's more work. Yes, it is. But it is something that I encourage people to do because not only do they taste better, they're so much better for you and they can really help with your migraine problems. The other thing that you'll start to find is that there's um, a really important sodium potassium balance in our body. The two uh, minerals are very connected to each other in the way that the body uses them. And if we were eating the way that our ancestors ate, then we would be eating about one part sodium for about five or more parts potassium. About a one to five ratio sodium potassium was how our bodies were designed to function. The way that processed food has skewed, it's more like 10 to one sodium potassium or 15 to one or 20 to one. And we don't even really know what that's doing to our bodies except that everyone agrees it's not a good thing. Now, I said I was going to give you 10 everyday things. I'm actually going to tell you an 11th just so that you walk away feeling like you've really got some good information here. There are some other foods that are super common and very healthy foods that are potentially migraine triggers. Citrus, the entire group of citrus can be triggers. Or maybe it's just lemons for you or just grapefruit or just limes. And those are things that you're going to want to take a look at. Onions are a really powerful trigger for a lot of people, and they often, um, onion powder is in almost every processed food that's savory, so that's an issue, and also vinegar because it's fermented. So those are some things to look out for, and I didn't know about any of those either. Now at this point, you might be feeling a little bit overwhelmed. You might think, oh my gosh, this woman just downloaded all this information. What, how am I supposed to handle this? How am I supposed to manage this, all this information? Well, first let's just go back to taking a nice deep breath. And then let me tell you about a, a solution that might be of interest to you. I created something called the Migraine Relief Plan and I wanna spend just a couple of minutes telling you about it today. You know, if this had been available when I was diagnosed, I would have jumped in and been the first person to sign up because it would have been so helpful to me. It would have saved me so much time. It would have saved me a lot of money. 
And it would have been so much more enjoyable than going cold turkey off of salt overnight and having my food taste horrible for seven weeks until my taste buds adjusted. I want to tell you about uh, some of the people that have already gone through the migraine relief plan as we go along. So this is Noelle, and Noelle is someone who um, eats primarily a vegetarian diet. She raises chickens in the Pacific Northwest, so she does eat eggs. She eats a little bit of fish here and there, and she's a dairy sensitive. So when Noelle went through the program, what she found was that she really had no idea what her triggers were. And not only did she learn that and now can avoid them, but because the recipes were so helpful to her, and she also became one of my recipe testers, she really felt much more empowered to um, really kind of kick her headaches pretty much to the curb. Now, you may not need the migraine relief pen, but I want to tell you a little bit about why it might be useful for you. You know, this is another one of our um, key people that started the program early, Christy. And Christy was someone who was not cooking. She did not cook. She did not like how to cook. And, um, but she was excited about taking the plant, the program. She did do some of our recipe testing for the book. And not only did she learn how to cook some simple, healthy meals, but she really found an enormous, an enormous change in her life and her migraines going by going through the program. So the first question I want to have you think about is, you know, if you're losing more than one day a month to headaches or migraines, you know, maybe this is something that you would want to consider. So if you become a member of the Migraine Relief Plan, let me tell you what you're going to get. You get an eight-week course that transitions you onto the plan. So it's easy, it's step-by-step, -step, and it's over time. It's not an overnight thing. You get the materials that you need exactly when you need them and not any sooner. You get 100% safe, trigger-free recipes. And I can't really stress this enough because there are only a couple of other, um, there's very few migraine-friendly recipe blogs. There's two or three. Um, but even they may not have completely trigger-friendly uh, trigger-free and migraine-friendly recipes. All of my recipes are absolutely, you can completely count on them as being safe for migraine, unless they happen to include something that you know is a trigger, like tomatoes or something might be specific to you. Also, we're creating a community of people that want to be well and want to focus on being well. Now, there are other communities online uh, that are free, that um, where you can ask questions and you can um, you can kind of commiserate with other migraine sufferers. But it's really more about the misery as opposed to the wellness. And this this community is really focused on wanting to be as well as possible, not wanting to focus on how horrible it is to have migraines, which it is, but focusing on that doesn't really make you feel any better. <laughs> so our community is really focused on wellness. And I just want to have you think about, you know, what would you be able to create if you had more pain-free days? Would you be able to, you know, go on a trip to Hawaii, where, like where this picture was taken of my feet? Uh, would you, you know, do something different with your life than you're doing now? You know, what would be, what would open up for you if you had more pain-free days? So the migraineleliefplan.com is where you go. You click on the register button and you go through the registration process when you're ready. And after that, you're going to log in, which is right under that registration button. And I just want to give you a little behind the scenes tour so you can see kind of what you get. So once you're logged in, you then the member area becomes open to you and you'll get you'll see that you have all eight weeks of the course, which are available to you, obviously, the entire time you're a member. And if you go into, say, week one, you'll see that there's little videos. Now, the videos are about three to four minutes, so they're all in little bite-sized chunks. They're easy to watch, they're quick, and they give you just the information that you're looking for. Maybe three weeks later, you're kind of forgetting about tracking. You can come back and just watch the tracking video. While we have over 90 minutes of content on the site, it's all in these nice little bite-sized chunks. You also have a 
pretty simple assignment each week, something that's doable. They've all been tested by migraine sufferers. So it's not some crazy thing like cleaning out your entire kitchen and, you know, redoing all the shelves um, overnight, which, you know, there are plans that <laughs> encourage you to do that. Another thing that you get here that is not available anywhere else is uh, uh, what we call our Apple a day emails. So at the start of week two, either on the Sunday or the Monday, whichever day you want your emails to start, you click on that link in week two and it'll kick off your Apple a day emails. You'll get a helpful email from me every single day for the next seven weeks. And they're fairly brief emails, but they're informative. There's lots of really good information in there that expands upon the program. So I would encourage you to take advantage of this because we spent a lot of time creating this additional content just for our members. As I mentioned, you also get all the recipes and we're adding new content every week. And you can search by type of food like appetizer or soup. You can search by ingredient and you'll see that everything is of course migraine friendly. We also have things like book reviews and interviews with experts, and we're gonna be doing more of that as the time goes on. So anything that I think will be helpful to people who um, have migraine will be included in the site. You also get handouts that you can download and print out, a dining out card, shopping lists, uh, tips on how to return food, you know, more in-depth book reviews, and you choose which ones are interesting to you and download those and read those. We also have a Facebook group. Now, we looked at doing a forum for this, and every time I've ever been involved in any website that had a forum, I just hated the forum. To me, they're very clunky. They're not intuitive. It's just they're not fun to use. They're not easy to use. And I said, you know, I'm on Facebook every day. Most people are on Facebook every day. We'll just do a Facebook group. Right now, as we're launching, it is a public group. But as soon as we get some members going in there, uh, we will make it a private group. So it will be only for people who are members of the Migraine Relief Plan. And that's a place where I will be sharing links. You can share recipes. You can make friends. You can share tips. You can ask questions. And, you know, anything that you need, you can get that live component through the Facebook group. Now, as I mentioned, um, we're adding new content every week. Um, I've seen other membership sites. I looked at a lot of them before creating this. And a lot of them are pretty, like, you, you get the 21-day cleanse and that's it. You know, 21 days are up, your membership goes away, and there's no new content being added. This is something that's dynamic. We're adding every week either a recipe or a how-to video, or an interview, or a book review. So, and then we start over another, you know, week four is another recipe, et cetera. And so every week we'll be adding new content for you. So you're not just getting what you pay for when you start, you're gonna get all of that plus more. Now, when you sign up for this webinar, I sent you this worksheet, um, What and the third page of it was, what does migraine cost me? And you may not have had time to take a look at it or fill it out, but I would encourage you to do it after the webinar just to kind of get a feel for how much, in a tangible way, how much is migraine costing you in a dollar amount. So I figured it out for myself, and my estimate was that migraine cost me about $6,540 a year, give or take. That's a lot of money. $6,540 a year. There's lots of other ways I'd rather spend that money than on migraine. So what does that mean? That's having three medications, so co-pays for three medications, three doctor visits, so only going three times, that's my copay on those, and missing one day of work a month. Now, and we're still at $6,540, it's a lot of money. So when you do your math, and it's probably going to be more than $347, I'm going to ask you the question or to come back to think about this, would an investment of $347 be worth it to you if it would reduce that annual cost, that annual tangible cost? I would have paid much more for this program than $347 if it had been available to me, but it wasn't, and I had to create it. 
here's some of the reasons why it's useful to you. You're not going to have to go out and spend an hour at the grocery store every time you go reading labels like I did. You're not going to have to go to the research library and download hundreds of PDFs to read them and figure them out. I already did that. You don't need to read all these books. You don't have to decide which of the many versions of the low tyramine diet is the best one because they're all different, slightly different on the internet. I already decided that for you. You don't have to give up anything overnight. Our program is a gradual step-by-step -step process over eight weeks. This program has done all that for you and it's put it together in this really neat little package. So I'm gonna just encourage you to think about, is this something that you want to invest in to invest in yourself and your health? And if so, come on back to migraineReliefplan.com, click the register button, and then see, you know, if you do the easy assignment each week and you're making these gradual changes and you're slowly shifting over to a more migraine friendly lifestyle, you'll start to see how your investment pays off. <clears throat> and again, I'll ask, you know, what are pain free days worth to you? What is it worth it to you to not have to miss a family event because of a migraine or your kids recital or to be sidelined when you're on a really nice vacation and miss an entire day. Those are intangible costs, but they're also of value. I'll tell you how I felt about it. When I started and I was diagnosed, I had a headache every single day, every day. And I was having one to three migraine days a week, sometimes as many as five. Now my headache days are a norm. Headache free days are norm. I don't have a headache when I wake up every day. And I usually have about one to two migraine days a month. And those for me are triggered by either a particular weather pattern or travel. That change has changed my life. And I really hope that you would see the same kind of results. So the last person I'm going to tell you about is Sarah. Now, I'm sorry I don't have a better picture of Sarah. She doesn't like having her photo taken, so this was the best that she could offer me. When Sarah started the plan and when we did our beta testing, we actually did a Google Hangout, so we were doing live video chats once a week. And Sarah was sick almost every single week, but she would still attend. You could tell she just felt horrible. You could see that she was having a really awful migraine, and she still showed up every single week because she was so determined to see if she could feel better. She also told me she was a super picky eater. She didn't like to cook. She probably wasn't gonna use any of my recipes, but she wanted the information. One of the things that Sarah found out was that sugar was a huge trigger for her. And she cut back, way back, on sugary foods and started seeing improvement. And you know, when you finish the eight weeks, you're actually just kind of starting being on the plan. And we then encourage you to stay on the strict version of it for four months. And then you can start testing foods one at a time to see how many of those foods you're missing you can add back into your life safely on a day-to-day on -day basis. So a couple months after the program ended, I got an email from Sarah and she said, you know, initially I didn't think that the plan really helped me that much. It was interesting. I did feel like I learned some stuff, but I really didn't see a huge, you know, necessarily a huge change. And then I realized this morning that I hadn't, I haven't called in sick to work in about a month. And Sarah was having five migraine days a week and was calling in sick at least one day a week when she started the plan. So she was worried about losing her job, let alone feeling miserable. And she now recognizes that it really made an enormous difference for her. So that's exciting for me because I built the plan and the program for Sarah and Noel and Christy and maybe you who are, who are listening to this webinar or watching this webinar right now. I hope that I can help you have a success story as well. Now I mentioned that there would be presents, so I want to tell you what those are. Uh, in your uh, follow-up email, you're going to get a tracking sheet, which is one of the great tools that people have found to use to just to start to see what their migraine patterns are. And of course, that's a free gift for me to you to utilize as you see fit. But the bigger gift is that if you sign up today, we're going to give you $200 off that $347. You need to use this code WEBINAR200. It's all caps. And it's only good through tonight. So you, if you want to, if you're ready to sign up, 
go for it. Go sign up right now and you will get that $200 off. So that's an investment of $147, which is now seeming pretty awesome, I think. Remember that the code expires tonight, so it will not be good tomorrow. So I'm not, it's not a, it's not a pressure tactic. It's just this is how we've set it up. And so it's fine if you don't, if you're not ready today, no worries. You'll get an email tomorrow with another discount code. It'll, it won't be $200 off, but it'll be very nice and generous. And you know, you have a couple days to think about it before that code expires. Now, when you sign up, you will get everything that I showed you. But it's not an eight week program that you're paying for. You're paying for a one year membership to the site. So that means as we add guided meditations, as we add recipes, as we add book reviews, uh, as we add you know new how to videos, you get all of that and can access it for an entire year. So it's not just the eight weeks, it's an entire year. It's a year of being supported and encouraged in your wellness journey. And it's a year of recipes and how-to videos and other resources. And I'm just going to ask you to think about, you know, what is that worth to you? I do hope that you'll join us. And if you have any questions, I would encourage you to send me an email. Um, we don't have chat enabled today, but we will in the future. And I just want to thank you so much for taking the time to sit through this today and listen, and hopefully you, I gave you some good information. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.